and welcome to open studio so this is the blank canvas we're ready to start a new one i've got a lot of requests for the razor blade paintings it's it's pretty common to have people ask how they're done and i love that because it's kind of something that just popped up a while ago i started doing them um gosh i think the first one was back in 2010 maybe no earlier than that yeah, definitely earlier than that. In any event, so I do these razor blade paintings pretty frequently. So I thought it would be fun to do this one as an open studio. Now, the nice thing about this one is some of the other ones, razor blade paintings don't take as long as some of the epic paintings just because they're, because they're so small. I, there's only so much you can put on them. So what I'm going to do today is uh, I think I'm going to start a painting of a Shelby Mustang. So I went to... Las Vegas and visited the Shelby Museum and took a bunch of great photographs. This particular car I've actually done a painting of before and this is what it looks like. So it is uh, just a beautiful car. It was just kind of sitting outside in the Nevada sun. It was something else. So this car became a pretty popular target for me. So the first thing I do when I get an idea for a painting like this is I will take it into Photoshop. So here is the original painting and or the, sorry, the original photograph. And what I do is I end up just kind of skewing it and rotating it a little bit and scaling it and all that fun stuff until I get it kind of where I want it on, on the blade. So that I, once I get it to close to where I want it compositionally, then I reduce it down in size to to uh, razor blade size and and then what I'll do from there is I will make a bunch of copies and this is what it came out like now I know this is difficult to see uh, the copies aren't great they're really just meant as a reference as a guide and you'll see what I mean as I get going I'll be using a lot of the original photograph uh, to work from this just gets things in place like the wheels and the lights and the overall body style and things like that but the, uh, the reference photo is really what's going to help me through this. So I just make a bunch of copies of it and put it all on a piece of paper and it's ready to go. So this is scaled to size. These are, this is razor blade size, which is three quarters of an inch by one and a half inches. That's standard razor blade side. So what I do is um, there's a lot to think about with a razor blade as far as composition goes because you have... You have the notches in the side and the hole in the middle. So those kind of things, I try not to put anything overly too important in those areas because they do get cut out. But again, you know, it's, it's all part of the thing. You can't, you know, I try to just do the best I can, but just again, the fact that it's on a razor blade is really what it's, what it's all about. If I wanted to have everything in here, obviously I would just cut a small panel and paint it that small. It would have the same effect, but again, it's, it's a razor blade. So. So there you go. So I have all those copies made and they're ready to go. So one sheet of paper is definitely enough, but I printed out just an extra one at a little bit different, a little bit different exposure. So I can get some, you know, different, different details. I'll probably use a lighter one. I usually use a lighter one more than the darker one anyway, but there you go. It's probably not going to get to cutting in this episode because we got to do some prep work. Now there will be some editing. Uh, normally this is just raw footage like I don't edit any of the open studios but there are there's moments we'll have to like go to another part of the studio or set something up uh, which you guys don't need to be a part of really um, it just wastes time essentially you guys just want to see the actual actual work so for razor blades I grabbed these from the local hardware store and Believe it or not, all razor blades are not made equal. <laughs> uh, these, these ones I just grabbed. I'm hoping these are going to be okay, but we'll find out. So we'll open these up and take a look. And I'll show you what I mean about that. Because again, you know, normally you never think about your single-edge razor blade. You just put them in your window scraper and go to town. But when you start doing stuff like this, when you're actually using them as a substrate, there's some things that need to be looked at. So I'm going to grab a few of these because again my experience with them has found that they are not all created equal. Okay so we'll get some magnets out here just to kind of keep them in place while I'm messing with them. 
first thing I need to check is uh, to make sure that one side is, is clean. There's no engraving, like the USA here. Um, if they have stuff on both sides, you have to sand that off and fill it. So I try not to get those. All right, so the first thing, I know this is super nitpicky, but if you're going to put, you know, a real expensive painting on a razor blade, it, you're going to want to make sure that it's right from the beginning. So the things I look for is to make sure that the handle, this part up here, is put on straight. So sometimes they're put on crooked and it's just, you know, it's a minor thing, but I don't know, it makes a difference for me. The other thing I got to make sure of is that this handle isn't jammed down and blocking some of the hole. That, that's a bad look as well for me. Uh, this razor blade, the very first one out of the pack, is perfect. It's ready to go. So that's a good thing. Now, for safety's sake, I'm going to remove some of this edge. We don't need them you know crazy sharp so I'm gonna put these away that was really good usually like when I've bought cheap razor blades or you know like no-name razor blades they are all over the road there was one pack where out of the hundred I, I, I couldn't use half of them I mean I could I just end up scraping windows with them neodymium to the rescue so we'll put this here and what I'll do is I will grab some sandpaper real quick okay so this is just this is just uh, heavy duty. This is 320, not heavy duty, but for the most part. So what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to dull this blade up a little bit, and this is just for self-preservation. Uh, when this is done, it has so much clear on this edge that it's not sharp anymore. But even still, if that if that edge somehow breaks through. Um, I used to frame these open, meaning, you know, they just sit in the frame and then, and, and there wouldn't be any glass on them. So people, what I found is people would actually go and try to touch them to see if they were a real razor blade. And uh, that never worked out well. I've never had anyone cut themselves, thankfully. But um, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, forget it. I'm just gonna start, I'm just gonna take the edge off. So you just kind of roll the edge over. Now you could certainly, if you had a, you know, a small grinder, that would be really quick. But um, again, this works because you just want to take that, take that edge off so it's not blisteringly sharp anymore. Okay, so the next thing, continuing on with that sandpaper, not this sandpaper, but sandpaper, is to scuff this up to really get a little bit of a tooth in it. So for that, I'm going to use uh, 600 grit. And I start with the back. Now this whole, the whole blade is going to be primed. Um, and that's, that's done because I, the, the, the blade itself is steel. The handle here is usually aluminum. And what I don't want is um, any of the steel exposed to air because then it'll just, it'll do what steel does and rust. So I want to be able to base coat everything. So I just kind of hit this with the 600. And what's nice is this does two things. It takes any of the oxidation that's on the blade off. That's good. This magnet is way too strong for what I'm doing here, but it's okay. And then this is the painted side. So. Usually I try to get the back done first because the back doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter as much as far as being pristine. It's more the front. So if I do the back first, then I can really spend time on the front and get it, get it right. So I want to get right up under there, under that handle. So I just kind of slip the sandpaper right up against that handle and take out any other grease or grime and by putting a little bit of tooth on this this doesn't need tooth on it uh, the Audubon sealer is going to stick to it regardless however it's nice to just you know give it a little bit of something so then I'm going to take um, you can use wax and grease remover for me I mean with these small ones rubbing alcohol isopropyl rubbing alcohol works really well but what I want to do is I want to remove all the residual material I want this really clean I'm going to also do now that I'm getting it to the point where it's starting to get clean I'm gonna oops 
throw on a cotton glove so that I'm not putting finger oil back on this thing. Let's see, a little more running alcohol here. Lovely. And that's ready to go. Make sure there's no fuzz on it. There we go. Yeah. So that's ready to go now. That's ready to be um, autoborn sealed. Okay, so this is where one of those gaps is going to come. I'm going to set up the gun. I'll explain everything that goes on with it, and then um, I'll mount this, and then and we'll get to spraying it. So I will be right back. Okay. So first I'm going to do to spray this, I'm going to, again, I work with the back first. So I get all the back painted, and then I can flip it over again and do the, do the front but take a little bit more time and sand it and do all the fun stuff. So first we got to get this kind of attached to uh, this, the board here. This is just a, um, it's the top of a file box that I use for things like this. And it's great because I can move this around. If it gets too much paint on it, I just recycle it and it's done. It's just a neat way. And I bring this in and out of the spray booth. Like I have a little desktop spray booth. I shouldn't say desktop, it's pretty big. It's about, um, it's about three feet across and about two feet deep. Um, and it sits on one of my um, benches and I have an exhaust for port on it. And that I use for small things like this. Um, the only thing I don't do in it is I don't do any 2K clear in it because the filter is good, but it's not, it's not that good. So it's great for water-based stuff to kind of keep the overspray under control. So I put two loops of tape here, and I don't have them in the right spot, but that's okay. And then with the tape on there, I can grab the blade. Again, remember we're doing the, the back first. So I just kind of line this up. And the two loops of tape are there because I want to be able to get the edges, the edges inside the, the hole and the edges on here. Uh, so instead of just dropping one piece of tape on the whole thing and having like a buildup of paint there, this lets me actually spray the edges as well. So, uh, so that's what we got. All right, for spraying the base coat sealer. So Audubon sealer is great stuff. I don't have the original bottle here because what I do is I actually mix it up and I reduce, pre-reduce it. So this is 10% 4011 and Audubon Sealer Gray. So gray is the way to go for this. It's going to be a good starting point for this. Although I should use white for this, shouldn't I? Yeah, let's use white for this. If this is a black and white painting, that would be good. But um, since this is going to be full color and the car is bright red, I don't have to fight that with gray. So again, I have, actually this is the bottle, one of the bottles. So this is Audubon Sealer as well, uh, but except this one is the white version. Now they have black and they have all different colors. This stuff is great. This one's reduced a little bit more at 15%. It's a little bit heavier. And to run through the Grex Tritium with the 0.7, it needs a little extra reducer. So uh, that's what I could do. Now I don't recommend pre-reducing this stuff. I use a lot of it. So it's just convenient to have, um, have some pre-reduced. Um, but usually you should just kind of use it as you need it. Okay. Or mix it as you need it, I'm sorry. But like I said, I end up using this stuff a lot, so I'll go through this before it has any kind of issue with, you know, age or whatever. So we'll put some in the gun here. Now again, normally I would do this in the little spray booth, but um, I don't want to put my camera in the spray booth, so we're just going to go for it here. Uh, this is nice. The tritium has a fan cap on it, which is great for such a small gun. And yet it has a 0.7 millimeter opening in it, which is decent size. It's good size for an airbrush, but small for a spray gun, but just right for this. All right, so the idea, again, we're going to get into some um, editing here a little bit, but I'll explain why in a second. So first pass of this stuff is just really light. Actually, each pass is pretty light. I just want to kind of coat the the blade really lightly with this. I don't want to build it up so it's a wet coat. Just one about there. Now, 
The real important thing is, is to let each coat cure between the applications of the next coats. So this is where the editing comes in. I don't want to spend 10 minutes just staring at this thing drying. So we're going um, to break right here, and then I'll come back in about 10 or 15 minutes when this is cured, and we'll keep going with this. Be right back. OK, it's been about 15 minutes, and that's ready to go again. So you notice it's upside down. So I want to get this next coat from another angle. And it's just nice. I mean, it just, you, can, you can get it from different angles as you kind of spray it. But by actually physically moving it in a different angle, I know that I'm getting like a different, a different kind of, you know, different shot at it. So same thing here. I don't want a coat that's too heavy. I just want to kind of get it so it's just connecting on the surface. Make sure I get the edges down too. There we go. That's coat number two. All right, so I'm going to edit again, and I'm going to be back in about 15 minutes. So you can see why if we sprayed it and then we waited each 15-minute interval, this would take three episodes just to base one side of it, and I'm not doing that. So, all right, guys, I will be right back. And 15 minutes later, here we are again. So again, just kind of rotate it so it's a different angle. And now that I've got two coats on it and I've got pretty much the whole thing covered with a light layer or, you know, light coat of uh, base coat sealer. I can go a little bit heavier with the next coat. This is more like a medium coat, and this will just start to add a little bit of build up on it. And that's it. All right. One more break and we'll put the last coat on. Be right back. And back again. Okay. So the one of the big reasons to let this cure, one, it needs to cure uh, for the next coat. It just works better when the, you're putting a wet coat onto a cured coat. But the other really great thing about this base coat seal is once it's cured, you can actually sand it. So there's a little nib of dust right in there. So once you can, once it's all cured, you can literally just sand it and it powders off. So this actually came out really, really good. There's not much on this, but if there was a, you know, dust and nibs in it and everything, I could, uh, I could sand that down. So that's also a great thing. All right, so one more coat on the back of this and then we're ready to move on to the front. So I'll set this up one more time. Make sure, I'm just gonna use the cotton glove. Since I did sand it, I'm just gonna use a cotton glove to make sure I get all the sanded residue off. And we'll hit this one more time. So there's a couple good size chunks in there now. So again, this is the back, so I don't really have to worry about them, but if I wanted to take them off, I could. All right, so 15 more minutes and then we're ready to go. So what I think I might do, because you guys have now seen the process, I think what I'll do is the next thing to do once it's cured is I'll flip it over and do exactly the same thing to the front. Uh, but instead of having you, you see every single coat, I think when we come back I'll have the front already done and uh, sprayed anyway and then we'll, we'll see the rest of the prepping process and then we'll be ready to go. That way again, you're not missing much, you'll just see four more little breaks like we just did. Uh, so I'll get the front uh, painted up and cured and when we come back we'll prep this thing and be ready to go. All right, so there we go. So it's four coats on both sides now. Again, those first two coats are pretty light, so it's really like kind of like three coats, but you get the idea. Uh, this came out really, really good. So there's nothing really on this that needs to be taken care of, meaning little nibs or anything. But this would be the point where I would kind of get that last sanding in on this, make sure there are no little imperfections, you know, chunks of dried paint or dust or whatever. So another important thing to kind of keep in mind too is as I add layers, I did sand the blade so it's not very sharp. Also the layers of paint that will go on this will also help to dull that too. So it's a little bit of both. All right, so that's looking really, really good. It doesn't need very much work at all, which is nice when that happens. So after I'm done with that, grab this really old and worn Scotch-Brite pad 
and just give it a final hit just to make sure this side is really nice and smooth for the painting. This, this Scotch-Brite pad was originally uh, 800 grit. It's been used so much, it's probably closer to about 1500 right now. But I just really love it because it's nice and soft and it can get in all the cracks and crevices and all that. Make sure we get all that off and we are good to go. All right, so let's attach it to the panel and I think that will do it for this episode. I think we've hit everything we need to hit on this and we'll be able to get painting on this for the next time. But the prep is super important with this. Uh, if you get the prep right, the rest of it goes really, really well. Okay, so there's the blade. It's all nice and painted up. So now we will attach it to the magnet and we'll be ready to go. So the magnet, I have a, a wooden holder, but I've been using these sheet magnets for, for the razor blades uh, recently because it's just, it's, I don't know. It's, um, it's nice because they're, it's really flat on the surface. The holder I have, which I should have grabbed to show you, here it is right here. This is my original razor blade holder. It's a neodymium magnet on this little piece of wood. And what it allows me to do is put the razor blade right on there and then just move it around. But it's got some, you know, this magnet is gigantic. And, uh, and so, you know, it raises the magnet up a little bit. So, I don't know. I've had fun working with these uh, sheet magnets. So I'm going to do the same thing with the sheet magnet that I did with the, with the, with the cardboard. Essentially, I'm going to make a loop of tape here. It's kind of on the small side. There we go. It's probably too much tape, but it'll work. And then what I want to do, yeah, it's just too much tape, is just cut this in half. So one piece of three quarter inch tape will give me everything I need. So one bit goes on here and one bit goes on here. Again, I'm avoiding the hole in the middle of the blade. Put the glove back on, keep all this nice and clean because I really want to make sure there's no oil or anything on this. Just line that up in the center and then give it a good push. And that will be where it'll be until it's done. I got a little bit of a, I sanded through right on the top corner there a little bit. So what I'm going to do to take care of that is just put a little bit of, I don't have to spray it. I can just put a little bit of Autoborn sealer on it directly with a brush. So I'll we'll grab this and I tried to do this without the palette. We'll see what happens. All I need is a tiny bit of the paint. There we go. So just a little bit of paint on the brush and then I can just kind of apply it right on that corner. Again, I especially don't want any kind of metal showing on the steel part of it. The aluminum part is not as crucial because it's not going to um, it's not going to oxidize like the like the steel will, but still, I want to make sure that's all covered up. There we go. All right, so we are good. So welcome. Thank you for hanging out again for the first open studio of this series. This was fun, and um, all the razor blades are prepped the same way for me. Uh, I've moved away from using like a two-part etching primer on them because this Autoborn sealer is direct to metal and it works so well. So uh, so it works works out for me. All right, if you enjoyed this, remember to hit that like and subscribe. And if you're interested in helping out around here, you can join the Patreon. Uh, you can <laughs> join the Patreon page, that would be great. Or you can become a member here or even throw in a super thanks at the videos that you like. Helps out a lot, helps keep things going. All right, so for Steve Leahy in Open Studio and the brand new razor blade painting, I'll see you guys next time.